How's it going, everybody? It's Pete J. Back on the Hunter Call of the Wild. We're here in Yukon Valley. I'm currently in my um, outpost. Um, as I have just flown in from Quattro Colinas, I'm going to have to change out my loadout. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our storage. Um, before I got on, I did go and purchase some more 50 caliber uh, mini balls for the... Um, For the flintlock, which is the what was it called again? The Hudzik 50 cal cap lock. Um, I'm really enjoying this gun. It's a it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, um, as long as you're getting a good shot off, it it tends to take things down with one shot. So I got the Hudzik, which is kind of a uh, uh, what would you say? More of a a fan favorite for me right now. I'm having a lot of fun with it, so I'm going to bring that one, but. Uh, the reality is, between my Ranger 243 and my Grelic drilling rifle, I pretty much have everything covered. The Grelic drilling rifle has a 16-gauge shotgun, which will take on the Harlequin duck um, that we have out, that we may run into. Um, the Ranger 243 should take the uh, Red Fox and the Gray Wolf. I'm not sure if it will do the Caribou, uh, but again, the uh, rifle that the uh, Grelic has will will take care of everything else. So uh, we've got a pretty good coverage, and that's one of the things I do like about the Grelic is between the rifle and the shotgun, um, you wind up uh, not having to really carry so much, which allows me then to take a uh, a fun rifle like the uh, Hudzik. The 243 covers two to six. So anything between two to six classes, two to six, that would be the Harlequin Duck, the Red Fox, the Gray Wolf, and the Caribou. Although, you know, the, since the Caribou is a class six and the 243, you know, the highest is a, is a, is a, is a six, um, that gets to be a little bit more of a dicey, a dicey shot. Um, the Grillic has the 9.3 by 74R polymer tip. That's five to nine. So we've got a little overlap there. Um, classes five to nine, so that would also take care of the uh, gray wolf and the caribou, as well as the uh, grizzly bear, moose, and plains bison. So we have uh, 19 of the polymer tip, which gives us 40 uh, on the penetration, and the soft point only gives us 20. Soft point makes a bigger hole. Um, the polymer tips travel further into the the, the animal. We got the 16 gauge bird shot, 67. So those must have been on a sale at some point <laughs> where they were free and I just loaded up. Uh, but we also have some 16 gauge slugs, which will take care of four to seven. And then again, the 50 caliber mini balls, four to eight. So um, again, we're talking gray wolf, caribou, grizzly bear, and then moose. Um, but it won't bring down a, a bison, so. So that's what we have as far as our weaponry goes. We do have um, the proper scopes, sights, the Galileo 48 by 32 muzzle load scope for the uh, Hudzik, the Hyperion 48 by 42 uh, rifle scope, which is for the 243, and then the Falcon 3 9 by 44 drilling scope for the Grelic drilling rifle. Um, and then we're just going to take everything out and we'll go ahead and we'll put in what we need, right? Okay, so Antler Rattler. We, uh, Caribou, so that we can do that. Access Deer, there's no Access Deer. Deluxe Duck Taller. Again, we've got the uh, Harlequin Duck out there, so maybe. Whitetail, Springbok, uh, nope. White tail, black tail, mule deer, seek a deer. Nope. Deer grunt. Nope. Elk collar. Nope. Moose collar. Yes, we'll definitely need our moose collar. What happened? What's going on? Okay. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Moose collar. We've got uh, bears, so we're going to grab that one. Coyote, Eurasian lynx. Uh, we've got wolves, right? We got the gray wolves, so that'll be over here. Red deer, Sika deer, roe deer, Canada goose. Nope. Wild boar. Nope. 
Wild turkey, nope. We got mule deer scent, musk deer scent, red deer scent. Um, I'm not going to bring those. I do have my scent eliminator. I got my Apex View 7x42 binoculars. I'm not bringing any structures with me. I like to just walk. I think that's pretty good, although if we check the store, let's take a look at what we might have in the way of scents. Blacktail elk, moose scent. That might be worth a purchase. Real whitetail, yeah. Let's go ahead and grab some moose scent. All right, according to this, I have 20. I have 20 moose scentages. <laughs> I have more moose scentages than I know what to do. I didn't see any here, but it's telling me I have 20. So we'll go ahead and throw that in the mix. I think we're good to go, folks. Step away, we'll go ahead and set up our, we got our weapons already arranged, which is fine. That's the way we like it. We got more than enough ammo. So we can skip ammo. Our sights are set up. We got everything, again, the Galileo on the Hudzik, the Hyperion on the Ranger, and the Falcon on the Grelic. So the, um, the lures. I think we start with the smaller of the animals. So we'll go five will be our duck call. Um, six will be the antler rattler. Seven will be the Predator Jackrabbit Call. Eight, the Distressed Fawn. We'll go nine is the Moose Caller. And then zero, we will make our Moose Scent. So that will be how we've laid, out, laid ourselves out there, and we're good to go. All right, still no perk points. I'd like a perk point. Somebody give me a perk point. I've uh, reset the time. And we're getting going here at 6.33, so it took us about a half hour, about a half hour to get the, uh, get ourselves ready to go here. Sun's coming up, beautiful landscape out here in Newtown Valley. I am going to go ahead and complete a mission, so if you do not want spoilers and you don't want to see how the missions end, um, that's fine. This is not a major uh, mission. Uh, as you can see, it's about uh, 9 tenths of a mile away um, it's really just a photo mission so I have to go and take a picture um, if you are not interested in seeing it please um, turn away now <laughs> um, we will obviously nine tenths of a mile away it's going to take us a little while to get there so we're not going to be there right away if you want to watch and once we start to get closer you know shut it down that's fine I always enjoy having you along for the walk so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our map up here um, oh, we got to go ahead and put this here first. We'll take a look um, a little bit earlier on. Wow, I'm walking very slowly for some reason. Okay. I think my computer just has to blow out the cobwebs a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and we'll hop over here. Earlier I heard a female grizzly out, out here um, before I got on, uh, before I started broadcasting as I was getting things together. Um, I thought I heard a female grizzly out here. So we'll see if there's a an opportunity for a quick hunt here. Um, right now we've just been notified that there are... Ooh, hello. Hello, hi there. It's a moose. Let's see if I can't get that with my Hudzik. Oh, come on, man. So I have earned the achievement, I believe, where I have uh, I have actually uh, harvested 50 moose. So I've become quite the moose hunter. I'm going to hit the Q and bring back up my moose call. I'm going to try and stay in close here to the... Uh... Oh, nope, wrong button. If it 
was a male. Let's hit the zero, see if we can't track them a little bit. There you are, big man. Where you been hiding all my life? Uh... Got some good cover with this tall foliage here. Still not seeing him, but he sounds close. He sounds pretty close. Hoping I might be able to get up to this evergreen tuck underneath it before the big man makes an appearance here. Should be real close. Yeah, big man. Try to get over by this and see if I can't see him. I'm going to try and stand up. I got footsteps. There he is. Hudzik. It's going to take me a minute or two. But he's going to go down quick, 25.50. He should be going down right about there. I'm going to run and load. <laughs> A little bit bigger animal. Um, took a little, took a shot and uh, kept on going. I think it was a pretty good shot. We'll get up, up. we'll take a look at the blood splatter. All right, brother, put that away before you. Oh, we gotta put the cap on first. Firing. Okay, put that away before you hurt yourself. <laughs> That's a pretty good blood splatter. Vital organ hit just now. Take it, I'll take it. Again, he was bigger than uh, the red deer I took on Quattro last time with this uh, weapon. Um, so he didn't go down immediately, but we got some good blood splatter there, and I think we got another pretty good blood uh, splatter here. He cuts back this way. He's at 25 to 50 already at this point. 
So, 1,036 to 1,021. Wait a minute. Okay. 25 to 50, and he's still running. I think I see him right there, though. I don't know if you guys folks can see that. I'll stop and. There he is, right there, yeah. All right. Zero twenty five bleed rate medium. So we got the mini ball, and I got one of the bigger ones. I'd like to, I can't wait to do get on the Verhonga Savannah um, and uh, see what this gun can do against water buffalo. Uh, I'd also like to take a minute and thank Nico for the suggestion of uh, doing Yukon uh, Valley as well as uh, Verhonga. So I'm definitely going to get out there and I'm going to. Try and give a little bit of a, he's a big boy, isn't he? Look at that. He's a thick, that's a thick moose right there. He's a gold. We'll take him. He's a 1,178.23 pounds common fur type. We did have to track him about 87 yards. He was a four easy antlers and skull. He's a 196.2, which is just above gold. So made gold at 194. Um, hit him with the proper ammo. We shot him two times or less. His trophy organs are intact. His vital organ, uh, we did hit two vital organs. Um, I mean, look at that. That Hudzik. The penetration on that thing. Look at that. I mean, right through both of his lungs. His left and his right lung. I'm surprised he, he, well, again, being a bigger animal, he was able to run a bit. Even with, uh, with a hole in both lungs. So, 100% quick kill. 100% harvest check. 100% could sick. Harvest and uh, 50 cent, uh, 50 percent species difficulty again. He is a gold. Um, let's take a quick gander at him. He's, he's pretty, pretty moose there. That's a big. That is a big man right there. That is a big man goose. Oh, goose moose. <laughs> big man goose moose. A spruce moose goose. There you go. There's the antlers. Very nice. Get information. Um, I can't save. You can't tax your dinosaurs because you have insufficient funds. You do not have any slots left for saving this harvest. So I am going to have to load up on cash. I really need to just start shooting everything and anything I can because I need to uh, empty out my my stuff. So I cannot save the gold moose because I don't have any room. Oops, I thought it was. But I will take the money. Um, there is like a hundred thousand dollar rifle that I need to finish up the uh, finish up a mission in Verhonga. It's a uh, it's a water buffalo mission. You need this really big gun, um, and the gun and the ammo itself takes tons of cash money. So I keep trying to do that, but then I wind up. Uh, I'll end up spending it all on stuff like uh, opening up hunting, <laughs> hunting blinds and whatnot. So I need to get a little bit smarter with my money. Um, one of the hunts I'd like to do soon is I just want to go through my ammo locker and just start using it all up. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff in there that I think has been in there for a long while. And I kind of would like to start cleaning it out and, you know, starting over. Uh, I do want to go through, I've gotten all of the DLC, um, with the exception of the Bloodhounds. Um, and speaking of DLC, the new map will be coming out June 29th. So those of you who are looking, who are Hunter Call of the Wild fans um, and are looking forward to it, I can't wait myself. Um, I'm pretty sure that <laughs> more than likely what will happen is... Oop, somebody's yelling at us. It appears somebody wants to get shot. <laughs> it is a red fox. And I thought that might have been six. Nope, seven.
Um, yeah, so more than likely on the 29th when the new map comes out, I will probably pick up both the new map and Bloodhound. So I will once again have the complete game. But I got all these weapons and stuff, and I'm, I've, you know, you, you wind up with your favorites, the ones you, you trust, you like, and you trust. Well, I'd like to broaden my horizons a little bit, so I want to start uh, mixing it up. Let's see if I can't uh, maybe find some new favorites. the high ground so I'm hoping I should be able to see this thing pop out somewhere all right well I gave a couple of calls and uh, got no response One more, and then I think we'll get moving. Must have just been passing through. Take off here. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line, my friend. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll try to cut this. Um, so this is way out here. I think that's the last of... Oops. Do a cue. We'll try and use this natural cover here. Again, the uh, evergreens are great. You can get tucked right underneath them, right up against the uh, trunk. And then if you can get yourself a bit of a clear spot where you can see, the animals tend to have a bit of a difficult, more difficult time than you do. I'm not hearing any. I'm not hearing any footsteps. So we'll go tree to tree, tree to tree. Get back underneath this one. We'll see if we can't get a bead on this male fox. And we're going to go ahead and use the one, which is the 243. Oh yeah, Mr. Fox. He's got me monologuing.
think I saw you, Mr. Fox. Oops, sorry about that. Finger slip. This is what I don't like about the foxes. This is why I don't really spend, I don't tend to spend a lot of time on them. Because you could be here all day and he'll be playing with you. And as soon as you turn to leave, he'll, that's when he'll bark. And then you'll come back and you'll try to, okay, where is he at? Where is he at? And nothing, 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 nothing. And eventually you go, okay, I'm out of here, you know, and you'll turn. And just as you turn, he'll bark again. And you're like, come on, dude. Cut me a break. Again, I, again, nothing. I've heard nothing from him. One more call and we'll see what happens. I don't want to abuse it though either. And I'm not hearing footsteps or anything. So... Nothing. Bye, Mr. Fox. We are on our way. Is this my track earlier? It's starting to snow a little bit. Yukon Valley has wolves. And any place that has wolves, um, I find that I get that blood-curdling feeling when... Uh, you hear the wolves growl at you. You know they're close, and it's like, <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. All right, so here we are making ourselves, making our way to the darkest corner of the map. Um, we've done a pretty good job getting around this. Um, I don't know what this is. I've been here several times, but um, there's nothing there. So. <laughs> The only thing I could figure is once I get close to finishing the other missions, maybe then I'll I'll wind up figuring out what that is about. But for now, I don't really have an, any idea what that is. Grizzly bear, very fresh. Very fresh grizzly bear. Female, 363. To, ah, hey, how you doing? Seven? Nope, we're going eight. All right, we got a little bit of a growl, but so far no response to the lures. There's a female, 363 to 647 pounds. Um, she's a female though, so I don't, I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna wind up getting any sort of a trophy from her. I might try the Hudzik again on the bear. We'll see how that works. Hoping I will be able to get a nice, clean shot at her. So far, yeah, we just walked out the door on Yukon Valley. Got ourselves a gold moose. We had a little bit of an interaction with a fox. And now we are on the trail of a grizzly. So, 
very, very good hunting so far in Yukon. There she is. I got my three. I think that was a good shot. I think it was a good shot with the HUD Zick right in the side. I'm not sure. Waited for her to bring that uh, left front paw forward so I could tuck it in right there. I think that was a good shot. Go ahead and finish loading our HUD Zick. She's not, I don't think she's getting very far. Boom. I guess that's going to be another one of those things I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to start hunting a couple of times without the uh, scope. Just uh, sighting down the barrel. That's a pretty good blood splatter right there, I think. Vital organ hit just now. And there she is. You can already see her. So she did not get far at all. 363 to 647 pounds. Twenty five to fifty already bleed rate high. Yeah, so I'm liking this Hudzik on these bigger animals. It really does seem to uh do the trick. She's down already. So female grizzly. There she is. bronze so not good left lung liver and stomach again that Hudzik went right through the liver I mean right through the lung the liver passing through the liver and then, and then ending up back here in the stomach so there she is 49.7 so yeah she's a bronze not very big I'm gonna have to learn weight better but we got all the checks proper ammo shot her less than two times her trophy organs are intact and we hit one vital organ we got a hundred percent quick kill hundred percent harvest hundred percent consecutive harvest and a hundred percent species difficulty we'll make um eleven hundred and thirty six dollars species difficulty so a bear is a hundred percent species difficulty there she is And again, we have no way to save her, which is fine because she's only a bronze anyway, but still 1136 back on our way to complete our mission. So yeah, so far Yukon is turning out to be the place to be, huh? Yukon Valley, um, a gold moose. We got ourselves a bronze grizzly, which is still a pretty good pretty good deal um i used the uh, distressed fawn collar that seemed to bring her back uh her tracks seemed to be indicating she was walking you know walking away from us but she seemed to double back when she heard that distressed fawn um yeah missed out on the fox but that's okay i'll take the uh, grizzly And again, both with the uh, moose and the bear, I hit him with the Hudzik, and again, you know, really kind of helped out uh, with the, uh, I think it really helped out with the quick kill bonus. 
because it, they did seem to go down pretty quickly, especially the grizzly. All right, so we're coming up to about a half mile away, leaving a trail of uh, flower blooms behind us there. Not really seeing any trails, tracks, or nothing. No feces. We're starting to get a little winded, though, so we may... Once we get into the red uh, flowers up here, we might stop for a minute and just glass a bit. Look around, see if we can't see anything worth pursuing. How's everybody doing? You enjoying? Uh, do you enjoy Hunter Call of the Wild? Uh, if so, what's what are some of your favorite uh, maps? Which ones do you like to hunt? I, I've just been on uh, Quattro. Started up there with my brother-in-law, Tommy Naperville, Tommy G, on YouTube, Tommy G's Gaming Channel on YouTube, um, and we, we were up in Quattro for a bit, and um, the red deer were thick, so I, I stayed up there for a while, really just pulling red deer, um, and there's, there's, I got a couple of huge ones in my saved list, um, and, and again, and Need to get some money together so I can taxidermize them and get them up in my lodges. Um, and my lodges need to be redone too. I've just been jamming things wherever they would fit, you know. So I got—I think I'm going to go in and, and now that I've got good uh, examples of, of the critters, I think I might try to organize it a little bit better. Now this is the area you got to be careful of. These red... Uh, are these leaves? I think these are leaves, right? Yeah, red leaves. Red and yellow leaves. Very pretty. Um, but this is where the, the wolves tend to hang. And we do have to climb. And the photo spot we need to get to is up high. So we're going to have to get up high as well. Yeah, see, that's, <laughs> that's way up there, man. <laughs> All right, so we're about half a mile away. And we're still trying to find our way up higher. Um, so, yeah, so if you're out there, you're watching, you want to chime in, let me know what your favorite uh map is on hunter call of the wild i i would appreciate it um do you play hunter classic i've uh, i've recently picked that up but um am not having nearly as much uh success with it i'm not doing you know i'm not doing horribly i'm just not doing it doesn't feel like i'm doing as well um so i don't know I mean, the question always is, which is better, Classic or Call of the Wild? I, I think I lean toward Call of the Wild. As somebody who's not a hunter IRL, you know, um, I guess uh, Hunter Call of the Wild made things, um, was, was kind of more educational, I think. Um, hunter Classic is more figure it out yourself kind of thing, and uh, it's kind of aggravating. Um, right now I'm taking down, I'm taking animals, um, but because I'm new, I, I only have like a standard edition weapon that they gave me. And, and I know, I know it's underpowered for some of the, the animals I've taken down. Um, but the, and they, they yell at you and you don't get any, you don't make anything from it because, you know, you shot it with improper ammo and you're like, well, then how, what do I have to do to get a better rifle? You know, you need Eames and, uh, which is the in-game money, but I don't, I don't know how to get them. I keep, uh, 
when I do shoot stuff that with that is proper, and I sell it, I get like GMs instead of EMs, and you can't buy a rifle unless you have EMs, and it's like well, I don't. How do I convert my GMs into EMs? And it's like, well, you can't. And you're like, then I don't. I don't understand how I'm supposed to. <laughs> I don't know. How am I supposed to advance then? I don't. I don't understand. You know. Um, so. And when you look, they just say, "Well, you got to make you got to make money." And you're like, "Well, what what do I got to do? Do I got to you know drive a hack? What am I doing?" <laughs> because I'm shooting things, I'm harvesting things, I'm selling things, and I'm getting GMs and not EMs, and I can't buy a rifle with anything but EMs. So I, I don't I don't get it. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Don't keep me in the dark, man. Tell me what I got to do, and I will do it. So I kind of like the. Uh, I like the system that uh, Call of the Wild has better. It's more um, more informational, and ultimately, I think in in some ways, I think it is a little bit. Um, again, not being a hunter in real life, I think it's probably a little bit truer to the experience. Um, I can't remember. I had an example that was going to be my go-to, and I forgot what it was. But there was. A very real uh, instance where it's like that. I don't think that uh, Hunter Classic is realistic in that point uh, in the way they handled it. I think Class, I mean, uh, Call of the Wild handles it a little bit better. But I don't remember it now. There hasn't been a mountain built that I can't climb by jumping. <laughs> I just I jump. Look at that. Huh? I love that. The men and women who do the work on this game. Oh my gosh, you guys are artists. This is this is artistic right here. I mean, that's just, I love that. When you see the clouds and the smoke kind of billowing, blowing over the forest. That's art, man. That's art. It's digital. It's moving. It's three-dimensional. But it's art. I may not know what art is, but I know what I like. What was what was the old saying? I can't remember. When is it, went a little something like that. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so we're up here. Now we gotta go. We gotta go down. Don't tell me I gotta go down. We gotta go down. We are up above the. Uh, what do they call it. There's a certain line where. You get high enough. There's not enough oxygen, and as you can see, what happens is there's no not a lot not a lot of uh, vegetation. Hey, I found the one tree though. <laughs> there it is, the one tree, and one tree hill. Um, not a lot of vegetation, and as as a result, not a lot of animals. There's not a lot to to eat. There's not a lot of reason to be there, so they take off. We're at about 670 yards right now and closing until um, we get to this this um, mission. And uh, I will go ahead and complete it. And, and then we will make our way to the closest lodge from there and uh, probably uh, call it a night. And next time we will head down to Verhonga and see what, we, what damage we can do with the uh, Hudzik down there. Thinner, uh, thinner oxygen. Look at that. We've got the uh, sun peering over this mountain here. This makes it look like the moon almost. All right, let's do that instead. A couple of quick screenies. A couple of chesties. <laughs> I was watching Bob's Burgers, and they had uh, Ray's Davies, who is, I think, one of the funniest actors. Ray's Davies. Um, he plays uh, anybody who's seen Jumanji. He's the, the uh, guy who drives the truck. Um, and kind of uh, informs uh, 
the rest of the characters about what's going on. He's he's an NPC, non-playable character. Um, and he drives the truck to drop you off, and then he drives the truck to pick you up and, and drive you out of Jumanji. And uh, hysterical. There was, oh, what was the show? There was a short run show about a airplane that crashed. And he was he was on that. And uh, I think that's where I really started to become a big Race Davies fan. Is it Race Davies? Now I got me questioning myself. But he was he was a voice on uh, Bob's Burgers, <laughs> and he's hysterical. He's hysterical. Now I gotta look it up. Be there, and I think he's from uh, New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. So fit right in at uh, Tiaroa. Ray's Darby, I'm sorry. Ray's, John Ray's Davies is uh, an actor. Is a different actor. So it's Ray, Ray, uh, Ray's Darby. I'm sorry. Ray's, Mr. Darby, sir. I did not mean to get that wrong. Ray's Darby. Um, and he is hysterical. And big, uh, well, I was going to say big fan, but how big a fan can you be if you forget the guy's name, right? Okay, so I'm a fan who needs to be better in his fan. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be a better fan is what has to happen. Ray's Darby. Very funny. Um, all right, we're going to have to take the long way around because this is... That side was getting a little too chunked. A little too chunk a chunk. And in 38 yards, I think we're going to try and get up to the right of this bluff, and then uh, and then we'll hang a Louie. Uh oh. Let's go ahead and let's take a minute and catch our breath. New Zealand actor, yes, he's from New Zealand. I was right about that. So, guns akimbo. He's been in a lot of stuff. Jumanji. Wrecked. That was the name of the TV show. And I, like I say, that was where I first, I think, really started to get into, um, into just how funny he is. So, check him out. Ray's Darby. Actor from New Zealand again, Ti Aroa is in New Zealand, so he would fit right in. This is where it becomes kind of like a hiking simulator as you try to get up to this last area. I was going to try and hook a hook a left after this this uh, cropping here, but now I'm starting to think maybe I just try to cut it. <laughs> Because it seems to be a long walk. Alright, let's see if we can't get over it from here. I'm going to go uh, kitty corner here. Alright, folks. So if you don't want to see uh, how this mission ends or, or that much, you may want to turn away for a brief moment while I kind of complete it here. We walked this far. Let's get her done, huh? Ooh. So this mission... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't you fall down this hill. Holy cow. I am going down. I should have gone the long way. And I'm exhausted too. I'm afraid to stop moving though because I'm afraid I'll fall backwards. Whoa! Alright, stop here. Let's catch our breath. Whoa. Let's catch our breath. Alright, this is a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> 
I did not realize it was going to be this tough. Um, try to get our heart rate down. I think I could probably walk over here a little bit. Okay. Whoop. Get on that. Get on there. Don't you fall down that hill. Double jump. Double jump. It's like Mario. Double jump. Double jump. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. We're going to ride this here. Boom. Boom. There it is. Okay, double jump. Now we should be able to get up to this ridge, which will be make me very happy. There we go. All right, sports fans. We've done it. We have risen to the ridge. The high point ridge. Travel to Bed Parker's favorite vista. Let's take a quick look um, at the mission log. All right. Yukon Valley's best view. Bev Parker, I apologize if I have been curt with you, but life is a herder. Is difficult and helpful officials like Jim are rare. I want to thank you properly for your help. Head to these coordinates in the southeast corner of the reserve. I promise you won't find a better spot for a photograph. Mission objective, travel to Bed Bev Parker's favorite vista. Check and photograph the vista. Okay. So we will do that. Let's head over to the edge here. Let's grab our camera. Wow, that is a, an amazing view. There's a lot of amazing views here. Got the beautiful mountains there. Boosh. Achievement unlocked. Bev Parker. Bev arc. was in touch this morning. She has some family matters to attend to outside of the reserve. She wanted me to pass on her respects and to let you know that you are welcome to join her family for dinner. The next time you're in her neck of the woods. So. I have troopers who have never earned so much as a glance from her. So I think you're basically a VIP now. Maintaining a healthy relationship with the native Alaskan people in Yukon Valley is something I take seriously. And your work will only strengthen those bonds. Well, I'm glad I could help out. You know me, I'm always about helping out. Always want to be a help. Always want to do what I can. Is that a cave? <laughs> Is that a cave of wonders? All right, well, I guess we're going to head to here. I'm not fast traveling. We'll walk it. We'll see what we can do. It's about a mile away, so we're going right back. It looks like we're going to head back to the same outpost we were at. But that's okay. I think we'll... Maybe we'll try to get over by the... Uh, the water's edge there. We'll, just, we'll take the uh, river, the scenic, the scenic route home, huh? See what we can find. Not to mention, this seems to be a more conducive place to travel. So we talked about Ray's Derby. We're going to uh, talk a little bit more. We could talk a little bit more about the new map coming out. Mexico. Rancho de la, del Aurora, I believe it is. Rancho del Aurora. And as I said, from what I understand, it's supposed to be made available for PC on Steam on June 29th. So that will be a big day. June 29th is a Tuesday, folks. So mark your calendars um, for, well, six days from now, really. Yeah. So today is the 23rd. So we got six days, we'll get a new map, and like I said, I think at that point I may purchase the Bloodhounds. I haven't avoided it, um, I just haven't been behooved by it. Again, it probably would make the most sense for me, since I tend to do a lot of solo hunting, 
walking, you know, a lot of walking myself. Um, so yeah, the bloodhound may make some, may make a lot of sense for me. Um, but I've been a little reticent. Uh, you know, I heard things. I heard things. From what I understand, I think things uh, at this point are settled down. Things seem to be working a lot better, so I don't feel so uh, reticent about it. And we'll go ahead, and pick it up, and see what we can do with the with the bloodhounds. Um, that'll be fun, I think. It makes so make things should make things a little bit easier. Um, from what I understand, the bloodhounds are the first of the. Um, species that uh, at some point I, be I believe if I don't have this wrong um, they will be bringing in different um, different types of dogs but uh, they started with bloodhounds so that'll be cool because if you just go over this you know this broadcast here um, you know we could have used a pointer for that, that fox yeah <laughs> that would have been nice if we could have had a pointer for the red fox, that's all I'm saying, you know, is if we could have had a pointer for the red fox, it would have been a lot better, but uh, no such luck, so. A retriever, you know, if you're out duck hunting, um, and then rather than the duck floating into you, the retriever can swim out and pick it up for you. That'd be cool. Ooch, ooch. There we go. <laughs> That's a little spooky. It's a little spooky. All right, we're going to go ahead. We should be all right. We should be able to get down off of this pretty easily. Starting to see some vegetation growing, just as you would. Getting down closer to the lake. Um, actually, I think, is that a, no, it's a... It's like a river, right? It's part of this estuary. No, estuary. I'm just making up words now. It's kind of a hyperbole. Um, maybe an ob ombudsman? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm just saying words. I like to say words. All right, so let's... Uh, we're starting to breathe some heavy. Let's, uh, let's get to this ridge here. We'll just stop for a minute, pull out the uh, binox, and we'll glass a little bit. See if we can see anything. I thought it kind of hurt something. Uh, it might have been just a bird, though. There was something. It's way off in the distance, though. It sounded like maybe a fox. It sounded kind of like a bark. Uh oh. No, it's gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. Keep your eyes and ears open for wolves. Those are NPC sounds, non-playable characters. I don't think I can, whatever. Where is that duck? All right, on your horse, chief. 
I think I'm going to go back to a wireless mouse too. Um, it's so much better for broadcast because it doesn't, uh, you don't get that hang up. When the cord hangs up and then kind of fights against you, you're trying to move one way and the cord's getting pulled in another direction. It's just a hassle. All right. So we're coming down out of the hills here, heading back to our outpost. Hopefully we might be able to pick up one or two more hunts here, one or two more trophies before we get back to the, the outpost. Um, but we got one more mission off the list and uh, we're getting closer to being able to just uh, not have to worry about any more missions on Yukon. We can just uh, hunt for fun, hunt for fun. Wooch. That had a little bit of a drop to it. What time is it? 8.46, we may have missed drink time. Ah, Telltale Tracks. Let's see who might be prowling around our woods here, folks. I'm gonna say Red Fox. Red Fox, let's see. Yep, Red Fox. Heading up the mountain, though. I'm not going to chase the Red Fox up the mountain. <laughs> you may think less of me, and I'm sorry about that, but I'm not chasing the Red Fox up a hill. That's crazy sauce. So we made the circle. Point six five Lodge Pole Pine, but it's completely barren. No, not a stitch on it, man. What are we looking at? That's bear. Female grizzly. Nope. Got another set of tracks out there somewhere. see what we got over here. Everything seems to be moving away too towards uh, species. It's going to be bear I think. Yep, very old though. Where? Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody say something?
I plan to move scent. Boop. Scent eliminator. Let's go ahead and hit ourselves up just a little. Oh, nope. There we go. Go back to the moose. These are bare as well. Female. Pull out a little bit. Let's see what we got across here. Nothing. Whole lot of nothing, folks. Onward and upward, they say. Oop. Bang. Right into the tree. What the heck is that thing? That's a bear. You gotta be kidding me, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Come on, come on. There we go. Holy cow. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. I just got stuck right there. All right. I saw something red. It could be just those uh, red leaves on those. Uh... Yeah, that's probably what it was because there's, there they are right there. I just thought maybe it might have been fur. Yep. All right. Well, we're getting closer to the outpost, and we'll call it a night. But uh, I want to thank you for tagging along. Again, we're kind of running out of things here. Hoping to find something along the water's edge here, but so far, no good. We do have a 
box. I heard some. Okay. Oh, going backwards. See if we can pick up another bear here. It's like Bear Island or something. So lots of tracks. Old droppings. Very old droppings. So we got our choice. Old or very old droppings. Oh, ducks. They're going away from us? Yeah, they're dead. Tag them it. A little bit of lag there. I hope it's a male this time. There he is, where she is. It's 
Let's get the Hudson out again. Just try to slide over a bit. That was not a good shot, but it was moving towards me. So I wanted to try and get him, her, get her. Yeah, that was not a good shot, Pete, not a good shot. And that one I should have gone with the Grillic. Uh, old Vital Organs hit. Not sure what I can expect here. Seventy five to one hundred. Yeah, we're not going to get a very good harvest on this one. Again, that was that was blown. I just blew that one horribly. Rushed the shot. When I didn't have it, I should have just pulled back and tried to set it up. But it started running, and it appeared to be running towards me. So seen any tracks not seeing any tracks folks and I think I I must have died right because I I've got myself the uh, got my my red flower here Here's this. This tells me that she went straight. But I have a hard time believing that because there are no trail tracks straight. Wait. All right, we got disturbed vegetation right here. This wasn't, no, that was probably me. <laughs> that was probably me. Got to be here somewhere. Because I hadn't shot anything in this area before. And yet we have the... Uh, we don't have any other footprints. Seems to have just disappeared here somewhere.
Well, we're going to end on a weird one here. And again, this goes to show you that if we had the Bloodhound, I think he probably would be able to find this track. Not missing it, am I? Had to have turned somewhere, that's the only thing I can think. Well, it's getting late and I don't know what to tell you about these tracks, but it does not seem like it seems like she went down somewhere. Um where I don't know though. So, I think we're going to have to leave her, unfortunately. <sighs> That's weird. That's a weird one. Oh well. We were attacked by a bear. We defended ourselves, unfortunately. Uh, I think she went down, but, you know. I don't have any tracks to buy. I, don't, I couldn't find the body, so. And again, that would be one of those prime spots where, where the Bloodhound would be a big help. The Bloodhound would be able to, to uh, you know, I think fill in that gap and find where she uh, ultimately went down. It's a big help. Um, normally, though, I find that the tracking system in the game is, is better than that. You know, is, uh, is good enough. Uh, tonight, it, it just didn't. <laughs> it just it didn't. Didn't uh, come up. I've had that happen before, and sometimes what happens is um, you get you get on the trail so quickly after shooting the animal that they it's almost as if they the game hasn't been able to kind of write it in yet. You know, hasn't been able to spawn the track in. But um, tonight that doesn't seem to be that 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 doesn't seem to be what the issue was. We did not again because we had the Hudzik. Uh, I went through the whole reloading thing, so that should have let it kind of get to where it needed to be um but for some reason as you saw we hit that uh we hit that one track and that was it there was nothing left after that and uh not exactly sure what we were but i think we got it i mean it looks like it died it looks like it went down um And that's where we shot it, I believe, and we walked this entire issue. And there's, I mean, there was no body, and there was no no other foot uh, footprints. So that one bugs you. That's that same stupid fox that was bought, uh, teasing us when we started. It's a male. Ass. Sorry, Mr. Fox, we're going to let you go tonight because we're running a little late here. I was hoping to be under an hour, and now we're closing in on an hour and a half. So I'm hoping you all enjoyed the uh, trip. Um, if you did, 
uh, you know, give me a give me a follow. Uh, always like to have more followers, that's for sure. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to do some Verhunga Savannah soon. We do Phasmophobia. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other games that I'm looking to kind of break out. So, like I say, hit that follow button and, and come along for the ride. I'd appreciate it. I follow back most of the time. <laughs> so, um, if I get a chance, I will follow back. Uh, but until then, we're going to call it right here. We're going to get ourselves over to our outpost. Here we are. Beautiful calm water cabin here in Yukon Valley. Our Yukon Valley flag up there and go in and drop our pack, get ourselves something to drink and relax for the rest of the day. So thanks for joining us folks. Tune in next time and we'll uh We'll be out to Verhunga Savannah. So until then, have a great one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.